Hey guys, welcome back to Curiosity Data Analytics. As I've been doing for the past few months, I'm going to be reviewing in this video the latest update of Streamlit 143 and show you what new features it has to offer. So let's get right into it. All right, so first item on the list is an addition to STChat input, which can now accept files as an input. So this is a very interesting new feature and can be uh, useful in many use cases, I think. So namely, when you configure a chatbot with an LLM model, where uh, you would want to ask questions about a certain file you have, uh, well, now it is possible with this new feature. So this is actually the use case I'm going to be showing you guys here. So I'm not going to go into the fine details of how to configure this chatbot, but the code is right here. Uh, I actually have a whole video dedicated to this specifically, so I encourage you to check it out if you want to know how to configure this kind of chatbot. So the new feature uh, translates into uh, two new parameters. So you have accept file, which can be defined as either false, true, or multiple. So if you want to uh, input multiple files. And you also have the file type, which you can uh, define the file types that are allowed to be inputted into the stchat input. Now let me get uh, this code away from here. I have the two parameters here. Now the accept file is now set to false and default up to none. Uh, if I go and set it to true, you will see that the stchat input now uh, accepts files. And I'm going to be setting the file type to CSV because that's going to be what uh, I'm going to be inputting. Now let me grab uh, some simple data that I have and put it, well, drag and drop it here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask a very simple question. So describe in a few words the data set that is input here. And now it's generating a response. So we get this kind of response. So again, I think this is a very interesting feature, uh, especially in this kind of use case. Uh, but yeah, next we have some new stuff for uh, SD column config. Uh, so first being a new JSON column format. So if you have some data that is uh, set to a JSON format and you wanted to display it into a SD data frame, you can now use the JSON column uh, format to uh, display the JSON data. So here I have some example here. Uh, and when I double click on it, you can see that the JSON is correctly formatted and you can use the arrows to actually expand or uh, collapse uh, the data. Streamlit also added some pre-configured uh, column format options for a few column types. So for instance, here, when you're using the number column uh, format, you can now use a bunch of pre-built uh, formats instead of having to define them manually, uh, which can be quite useful and faster, of course, uh, in some cases. So here uh, I have actually put uh, all the available options in terms of format, uh, and then it looks like this. We have a similar situation with the progress column, uh, which looks like this. As for the datetime column, uh, there are fewer formats, uh, but they look like this. I particularly like this one, which is the distance uh, format, which tells you the distance from today uh, to the date that you have to find here um, in terms of uh, duration. As for the date column, uh, a bit of the same uh, situation here. And then we have the time column uh, with these formats here. Third item on the list is some changes into ST data frame. So they have added a new parameter called row height to actually set the uh, row height of the uh, data frame. So here I have, I have added a slider just to show you uh, the impact of the row height value uh, on the display of the data frame. So now it is set to 30, uh, but if I go lower, you can see that the row height is much uh, closer or smaller. But if I go uh, bigger, the row height is of course, bigger. Some other changes about the uh, this component here. So they have added uh, some auto size features. So when I click on it, it actually um, 
sets a correct size for the column, a bit like we see in Excel. Uh, they also have added a pin column. So when I click on it, it uh, automatically put the column at the start of the data frame. They also have added a hide column uh, feature. So when I click on it, the column disappears. And if I wanted to uh, show it again or unhide the, the column, I just have to use this feature here and uh, click on the column back here. Last item that we have here is a new custom component to display bokeh charts uh, in Streamlit. Now, natively, uh, there already is a Streamlit element to do uh, that called ST bokeh chart, uh, which of course can be used. Uh, but for some reason, this element can only display bokeh charts that are created with the 243 version of bokeh. So uh, like it says in the note here, if you need a newer version of Bokeh, well, you can use this custom component uh, if need be. So it is very uh, easy to use. You just have to, of course, install the Bokeh um, library with the Streamlit Bokeh uh, custom component. So we have some data here, and then you define a figure, a Bokeh figure, uh, this way here. So this is a line plot. And then to display it in Streamlit, you just use the Streamlit bucket component with the figure that you have just defined here. And then you have this kind of chart. So yeah, that's about uh, all the features or the new features in this new uh, Streamlit update. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.